Hi friends, here in this video, I will be explaining the problem on epicyclic gear train. So, let's get started. Now, here is the question in front of us. It is given that in an epicyclic gear train as shown in figure, the diagram is given to us. An arm C rotates at 200 rpm in clockwise direction. So, this arm C as we can see in the figure, it is rotating in a clockwise sense and it is rotating about the axis of gear A. So, this axis of gear A is fixed and the arm is rotating in a clockwise sense about this axis. Then, axis of gear A and the wheel A is fixed. So, this is the condition given in the problem that we have to keep the wheel A as fixed and while keeping A as fixed, we have to rotate arm C. Then, find the speed of gear B. So, the question is, we have to find the speed of gear B and it is also given that if the wheel A rotates 300 rpm in clockwise direction. So, if A is rotating at 300 rpm in clockwise direction, instead of being fixed, what will be the speed of gear B? So, like we can say there are two cases in this problem. In the first case, we have to keep gear A as fixed and in the next, we have to give this gear A speed of 300 rpm. So, when we have understood the question, let us get started with the solution part and just while moving into the solution, we can see this arrangement. Gear A is having number of teeth as 24, gear B is having number of teeth that is 48. So, I will start with the solution part. Now, into the solution part, such kind of problems can be solved with the help of the tabulated method or we can draw the table for this and I will just draw and explain it. So, here in this way we have to draw the table and the first column is the number of steps we are going to follow. Then we have operation, operation I will explain step by step. Then there is revolution of elements which is denoted by capital N and it would be in terms of RPM. After that in the revolution of elements the first column is for the arm C. Then next it is for gear A because we are assuming that in the first condition, we have to remember that arm C should be fixed and we have to rotate one of the gears like keeping C as fixed, I would be rotating gear A in a clockwise sense that is giving the motion to gear A. If A rotates clockwise since they are external gears, B would be rotating in an anti-clockwise sense. So, the table is in this way like we have column for arm C, then gear A, then gear B. Next, the first step would be, we have to fix the arm C. Fix the arm C and give plus 1 revolution to gear A. So, the meaning of it is, since the arm is fixed, here I am keeping it as fixed. So, the RPM is 0 and providing plus 1 RPM or revolution to gear A. Then, we have to find the speed of gear B. For that, I will be explaining it in this way. Like we can say, A is the driving gear, whereas B is the driven gear. So, in order to find the speed of B, the velocity ratio formula is to be used and it would be written in this way that since the velocity ratio for two gears which are in mesh is given by 
the speed of driven so the speed of driven gear and here the driven gear is b so speed of b denoted by capital n upon speed of a both are in terms of rpm and the speed is in inverse proportion to the number of teeth so when we have speed of b that is the speed of the driven gear in front of it we should have number of teeth for the driving gear that is ta and in place of or in front of na that is the speed of the driving gear we should have the number of teeth on the driven gear and remember in case of epicyclic gear train whenever we are having two gears which are external gears in mesh it means their rotation of direct direction of rotation is negative or we can say opposite so here in the velocity ratio formula as well we have to add a negative sign and the negative sign is added because since since they are external gears and because they are external gears the direction of rotation is opposite so it is negative suppose if it would have been an internal gear in that case the direction of rotation is same so no need to add negative sign there but since here they are external gears we have to add the negative sign so therefore n suffix b would be equal to na would be multiplied here so minus na into ta by tb next minus here we have given plus 1 revolution to gear a as we can see here so that is 1 ta is given it is 24 so first i'll keep ta as it is the values we are going to put later so this is ta as it is upon tb so finally i can say speed of gear b is minus ta by tb and that would be in terms of rpm because we are giving plus one revolution this plus one revolution is we can say that is the revolution per minute now after that so the speed we have got i'll just write the value it is minus ta by tb the next step would be or the next operation here multiply by m throughout this small m would be indicating the rpm so m into 0 this would be 0 m into 1 that would be m then here m is multiplied so minus m ta upon tb so remember in case of epicyclic gear train first we have to fix the arm as the diagram is given to us arm is fixed gear a is rotated with plus 1 rpm or revolution one single revolution then gear b its speed is written over here the next step or the operation is to multiply by m throughout this small m would be indicating the rpm so we are multiplying with small m rpm throughout next we are going to add plus n revolution to all the elements this small n indicates the number of revolutions so adding small n throughout so n plus 0 would give small n here i am getting m plus n this would be minus m ta by tb upon plus n so here the table gets completed so the last step would be to write the total motion and the total motion is for arm c it is n we can just see this it is n then for gear a it is m plus n and for gear b minus m ta by tb plus n so these are the total motions which we are getting now the meaning of these total motions is that this small n would be indicating the speed of gear or we can say arm c in this case so that would be n suffix c then m plus n would be indicating the spe uh, speed of gear a in rpm so that is n suffix a and similarly this total motion would be indicating the speed of gear b which is n suffix b so in short we have found out all the rpm in terms of these values 
Now applying the conditions which are given into the problem. So starting with the first condition. The first condition is in an epicyclic gear train as shown in figure, an arm C rotates at 200 rpm in clockwise direction. So this is the first condition given that arm C is rotating in clockwise direction about the axis of gear A and wheel A is fixed. So in the first condition we have to keep wheel A as fixed and give arm C clockwise rotation about A. So this arm would be moving clockwise keeping the axis of A as fixed. So I am just going to write this condition. That would be case number 1 for us. That wheel A is fixed. Now if the wheel A is fixed, its RPM or speed is denoted by N suffix A that becomes 0. And when I look into the table, the speed of gear A is m plus n as we can see here. So I can say that therefore it means m plus n is equal to 0 because this m plus n is equal to n suffix a that is the speed of gear A and since it is 0 because it is fixed given in the problem. So m plus n is equal to 0. Now keeping this as the first equation. Also it is said that arm C is rotating in 200 rpm in clockwise direction. So the speed of arm C that is n suffix C is equal to 200 rpm and as per our convention if it is clockwise rotation we have to take it as positive if it is anti-clockwise then negative. So therefore looking into the table speed of arm C is small n. So therefore I can say that since nc is equal to small n, so therefore small n would be equal to the value of speed of arm c which is 200 rpm. So here I have got the value of small n. Now putting this value in equation 1. So therefore putting n equal to 200 rpm in equation 1 so m would be m plus 200 is equal to 0 so therefore m is equal to minus 200 and the unit would be in terms of rpm so once m and n values are known we can easily find the speed of gear b which has been asked in the problem that is the condition explained here is wheel e a is fixed and the arm is rotating clockwise in 200 rpm and for that condition we have to find the speed of gear B. So speed of gear B can be taken from the table. Here we have gear B whose total motion is given here. So I will write this n suffix B is equal to. Speed of gear B. minus m t a by t b plus n so putting the values here minus m which is minus and small m value is minus 200 so that would be positive t a is 24 t b is given as 48 plus small n which is 200 rpm so after the calculation i am going to get the speed of gear b and the value comes out to be it is 300 rpm and since the answer is positive it means gear b would be rotating in a clockwise sense. So that's the first answer we have found the speed of gear b while keeping wheel a as fixed. Now going into the second case for this problem which is if the wheel a rotates at 300 rpm. In the first case wheel A was kept fixed. Now in the second case wheel A would be rotated in clockwise direction having 300 rpm. Instead of being fixed what will be the speed of gear B. So we have to find the speed of gear B again for case number second or condition second.
केस नंबर सेकंड इज व्हील ए रोटेट्स एट 300 हंड्रेड आरपीएम इन ए क्लॉकवाइज मैनर सो देर फॉर आई कैन सी दैट स्पीड ऑफ गियर ए इन सफिक्स ए इज 300 हंड्रेड आरपीएम इन क्लॉकवाइज डायरेक्शन सो देर फॉर फ्रॉम द टेबल एम प्लस एन इज इक्वल टू एन सफिक्स ए दैट इज स्पीड ऑफ गियर ए एम प्लस एन एंड फाइनली एम प्लस एन वुड बी इक्वल टू थ्री हंड्रेड आर पी एम कीपिंग दिस एज द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन देन सिंस नथिंग इज स्पेसिफाइड अबाउट द आर्म सी सो लाइक इन द प्रीवियस केस वी हैव टेकन टू हंड्रेड आर पी एम रोटेशन ऑफ आर्म सी so here also i am assuming that along with gear a arm c is also rotating in a clockwise manner and having its rpm as 200 which was taken previously because in the second condition it is not specified if the arm c is fixed they have only given that wheel a is to be rotated instead of being fixed so we can say that arm c whatever previous motion it was having that would be same in the second case as well so n suffix c would be equal to small n and this small n is 200 rpm in a clockwise manner because nothing is specified about arm being fixed in the second case so finally from this i can write that speed of gear b n suffix b is equal to minus m ta by tb plus small n so just putting the values which have been given now for that small n is here i'll put this small n first in equation number 1 so therefore m will remain as it is small n is 200 rpm equal to 300 so m value will come out to be this 200 goes on to the other side so it is 100 rpm so here i am going to write minus this is 100 TA twenty four TB is forty eight plus small n which is two hundred. So from this, the speed of gear B would come out to be one fifty RPM. And the answer is positive. It means it is in a clockwise manner. So that is the speed of gear B. So we have found out the speed of gear B for both the cases as mentioned. In the first case, the speed is 300 rpm where wheel a is fixed and the arm is rotated in a clockwise manner with 200 rpm in the second case the wheel a instead of of being fixed it is rotated in a clockwise sense and we are getting the speed of gear b which is 150 rpm in clockwise direction and with that the problem regarding this epicyclic gear train gets completed at the end if you'll find my videos helpful you can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching